Today I'm going to show you how to invest in stocks once you are financially stable. And I just want you to know something. It's time for you to start making your money work for you. It doesn't take a lot, but it does take a little bit over the course of time to grow into a lot. Real quick, if you are skeptical or you're just not sure about investing, I'm going to put some of my results up here on the screen. I was able to grow my net worth to six figures in under seven years. And we're talking about liquid net worth. It went from like negative 32,000. That was all the money that I owed in student loans. It was like negative 32,000 and went all the way up to $100,000 and way beyond that in just under seven years when it comes to liquid net worth in the form of cash and investments. So I'm not including my car or anything else besides my cash and my investments when I'm talking about the six figure net worth. So anyway, now that you are in a good spot financially and you are financially stable, we're gonna break down the steps in a full step-by-step -step tutorial of how to start investing and doing so correctly. First thing I want you to do is decide exactly how much money you want to commit to every single month to investing. And since you're financially stable, I'm sure you already have an idea of how much that money is or what that number looks like. But even if you didn't know, I would just say very simply, start with $100 and then move it on up from there. Step two, pick a platform and I'll make it easy for you. Choose something that is easy to understand. So me personally for my Roth IRA, I chose M1 Finance as my account because it's super easy to understand. It's very user friendly and I know exactly how my money within that account is divided up. And for my individual investing account, I chose Weeble because again, the user interface is very user friendly. I thought it was sleek and clean looking and it's a whole educational platform up there for free. And that's where I decided to invest my money. I have links for both of those down in the description if you're interested in either one of those or even both of those. Once you click through that link and you invest your money into those accounts, you will receive an incentive in the form of stocks. You know what I'm saying? Some extra money to go towards your first investment. So check those out if you're interested in that. Step three, prioritize your investments. And so what I mean by that is I'm assuming that you're a professional who is already invested into your 401k. And so if that's the case, the next thing that I think makes the most sense to prioritize next would be your Roth IRA. And this is purely due to the tax advantages that comes with it, as well as the freedom that you have within that account to invest in the pretty much anything you want. And I would prioritize this to the point of maxing it out. And by maxing it out, I mean putting in $7,000 into it per year. At least that's what the max is right now in 2024. It is subject to change. It could very well change next year. But if I could go back in time, I would have 100% prioritized my Roth IRA because at the very beginning, I really didn't take it too seriously. I just kind of put, uh, here's $500 here and there. And then the next year, I didn't put anything in there. And then right now, I just feel like I'm playing catch up basically. So I feel that when it comes to Roth IRA, it's a very limited opportunity because there's definitely an income limit. And when you hit that income limit, you can't contribute as much. And then once you hit another income limit, you can't contribute at all to your Roth IRA. And of course, the more that I put in there, the younger I am, the more money that it's gonna end up being by the time I retire and the more I will be able to benefit from the lovely tax advantages that comes from this account. So that's why I would personally prioritize that. And then next, I would focus on investing into the individual investing account. So we're gonna go over a quick example just to make this make a little more sense to you. So at this point in time, we're prioritizing how much of the money goes into which type of investment. And so let's say, for example, you have $1,000 every single month that you want to commit to investing. And I'm doing this purely for the ease of math. And so if you prioritize maxing out your Roth IRA, I would say $600 towards your Roth IRA every single month, that's going to be over $7,000. So you actually won't even be able to put in that whole amount. So that's the perfect amount right now to start putting in. And then the remaining of that would be $400. So you can start putting $400 towards your individual investing account. And honestly, that's one of the parts that most people skip doing because they want to get into analysis paralysis and start saying, well, what if this, what if the stock market crashes? That is the thing you need to get in order first. How much money can you commit to completely relieving yourself of and not missing and putting it into an investment every single month because you're ready for your money to grow? You're not stifled by any fear. You're not halted by any crazy thoughts you may have of something not going right or you not doing the right thing. You're just 
purely committing to a number you're taking your emotions out of it logically how much money can you do without at this time and just be ready for it to grow because once you've established that you can do step four a lot easier because step four is a step that scares a lot of people and it scared me for about two years before i really got serious about investing and actually committing which is why i'm harping on that a little bit because i don't want you to have to accept the fact that you not investing for a few years has costed you thousands and thousands of dollars because that was the reality that i had to face but this is the step where you decide what to invest in. And the thing about this is you have to keep it as simple as possible. Overcomplicating it and speculating too much will not help you at all. The best investors with the best returns on a historical level have been people who just invest and forget. Invest and forget. They just keep building and building and building. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that without having to think about it too, too much. But some of the investments with the greatest returns have actually, funnily enough, have been people who have passed away and, and everybody forgot about their investing account. And it was just growing and growing and growing. No one ever touched it. No one ever sold the investments. No one ever pulled out of investments. It just kept growing and growing and growing. And so that's the mindset that you need to kind of have. Just, just let it breathe. I mean, how often do you pull money out of your 401k? You don't, right? You just let it grow and grow and grow. The stock market might rise and fall like it's naturally supposed to do, but it is going to, for the most part, be up. And so you got to let it build and let it grow. And I'm going to show you how to do that with confidence. So for your Roth IRA, if I had to give you a very simple solution to your problem of not knowing what to invest in that I was confident would outpace most investors right now, I would tell you this. I would say pick two very strong ETFs to buy every single month. If you don't know what an ETF is, that's perfectly fine. You don't need any experience to actually do these things. But ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. Think of instead of buying one stock, you're buying a bunch of stocks that is in a basket that is the ETF. And when I say that you'll be buying these every month, that's actually a strategy called dollar cost averaging. It's when you buy something in the stock market on a consistent basis. And that's regardless if the stock market is going up or down. And here's how you're going to choose what ETF we're even talking about. Because I know you're probably like, I don't even know what an ETF is. He wants me to invest in an ETF. I got you. Relax. I got you. I promise. So check this out. This is how you're going to choose which ETF you choose. And I'm just looking at my notes real quick. <clears throat> if you want more security, little downside, but steady growth, you're going to go with two strong broad-based ETFs. What does broad-based mean? It means it encapsulates the entire market. So think about instead of just technology by itself, it's finance, it's technology, it's pharmaceuticals, it's industrials, food and beverage, things like that. So it has every industry you can think of tied into one thing, blended in such a way that if one sector starts to fall, that, that if one portion of that starts to fall, the rest of it can still be picking it up, which is why these have little downside. So now that you have an idea of what a broad based ETF is, and I do have other videos that go even more in depth than that, so I'll have these linked up here and also in the description. And there's so many indexes that these broad based ETFs could be based on. But for the sake of this video, we're going to go very simple. And I'm going to just give you two that make sense to invest in. And I happen to actually be invested into these two at this very moment. And they've done very well for me. So the, so the indexes that I'm talking about is the S&P 500 and the total market index. And two ETFs that represent these is VOO for the S&P 500 and VTI for the total market index. VOO has 500 plus companies in it. VTI has 2000 plus companies in it. So talk about diversify your investments. That is the definition of diversifying your investments. Now, if you have a little more risk tolerance, this is what I want you to do because you might have more risk tolerance, but you still probably want that security. You don't want to look and then boom, your whole market is down and you're like, what do I do? No, it's like, it's going to be very steady, but a slightly more aggressive type of growth than with two broad based ETFs. So what you're going to do is you're going to have one broad based ETF 
in one specialized ETF. And specialized sounds exactly like what it is. So instead of it being all these sectors in one ETF, now we're just talking about one. So for example, technology would be an example of a specialized ETF. So in this example, SPY would be the broad-based ETF, and this is also based off of the S&P 500, but then we have VGT, which is Vanguard's technology fund, and this specializes in technology. It takes the best technology companies and it blends them, and it's divided in such a way that the best performing businesses have a stronger prominence within this ETF meaning the ETF is made up of more of the better performing companies and less of the not as good performing companies. So if Apple and Microsoft are the best companies, that's gonna make up more of VGT than something like say Intel. And Intel is still a good company, but it's just not gonna be number one or number two, if that makes sense. So instead of just kind of blindly investing and not knowing which one stock is the best, you're going to want to start with these ETFs and you're going to want to do so within your Roth IRA first. And you can actually see the growth from these. And that's going to build your confidence for the next step that we're going to do. And by the way, if you want to learn more about investing, I do teach a course on this. But in the meantime, I have a list of 25 highly reputable stocks and ETFs that you can download by clicking the link in the description and you will have way more to choose from than what I'm telling you about in this video. And you can take those and do your own research and look at the growth and look at the prices and you can decide what you wanna pick based on that. That is my gift to you. You can click it down in the description. It'll have a nice little gift box beside it. And if you feel more comfortable, you can dedicate your money to your Roth IRA first and then do the individual investing account once you see your ETFs growing for you. But I want to show you some proof real quick because I don't expect anybody to just hear a few things to invest in and just start investing in them right away. Right. You got to do your research because this is money at the end of the day that's going into those stocks, into those investments. And I would much rather you keep your money then lose all your money or feel like you're going to lose all your money. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the charts for all these super, super quick. So VOO year to date has returned 19.02%, but we can go further than that. We can go all the way since it IPO'd. And since it's IPO'd, it's up 407.54%. And it IPO'd back in 2010. And the whole thing is... We want to go on five year increments since we're talking about the sake of this video. So in five years, it has returned 87.81%. Now, if you were to divide 87, 87.81%, 87.81 divided by five years, that means over that five years, it's returned an average of 17.5%. And that's for VOO. That's just for one of these four that we talked about. I'm not going to break down every single thing, but I just want to show you kind of the proof behind what I'm saying. So let's look at VTI now. So VTI is a little cheaper, but over the last year, uh, year to date, I mean, it's returned 17.65%. Since it's IPO'd, 379%. And in the last five years, 82.33%. So again, it's in the 80s when it comes to return. And it's slow and steady. It has very little drawdown, as you can probably see on the screen. We're going to look at SPY, which I expect to have a similar return. Year to date, it's up 18.9%. Last five years, uh, it's up 88.42%. Since it's IPO'd, 1,179%. You get what I'm saying. We're going to do one more VGT. VGT is a little more volatile because this is the specialized tech stock that we were talking about earlier. But year to date, it's up 20.78%. Over the last five years, it's up 163%. Over the last one year, 32.98%. So it looks to me like all of these lovely investments that honestly... I, I know a lot of really good investments, but these were just the ones in, in the forefront of my brain. Um, you're getting between 17 to like 30% returns on these consistently. Why would you not want to get 30% on your money compounded over and over and over again? For me, it was a no brainer. 
And this is how I grew my net worth from the negative 30,000s all the way to six figures because I figured out a way to do this very simply and easily and invest consistently and just keep doing it over and over and over again. Consistency is the key to excellence. So whatever you do, whatever your goal is, you have to be consistent. If you become inconsistent, your money won't compound as much. And if you get scared and withdraw your money, your money definitely won't compound at that point. So I want to share something with you. Because I think you understand the gist of the power of ETFs and how they're safer options, but they still give you very good returns. And those alone will more than outpace investors that even know what they're doing. And they know every facet and intricate part of investing. But the thing is, investing is one of those games where the more you know, sometimes it can actually hurt you a little bit because you can start to speculate and overcomplicate things and get get the wrong idea about certain stocks that are more volatile than they may seem and it might also slow you down on taking action and as we've talked about earlier in this video taking action is the single most important thing you can do when it comes to investing and you don't even have to put that much thought into it you can automate this thing if you really really want to and you just have to make the conscientious decision to say I'm going to invest. I'm going to choose this amount of money every single month to go into this account, and I'm going to invest in these two ETFs. And you have to make that decision. And so what I want to share with you is what you need to do once you move over to your individual investing account. And in this case, this is where I use Webull. But it's a very similar strategy because it's proven it's understandable. And we can talk another time about how we pick stocks and everything. I just wanted to give you some very strong examples that are absolute no brainers when it comes to investing. But for step number five, you want to choose one ETF that you are the most confident in. And maybe it's you're more confident in this one because you've invested in it before and it's given you a great return and you have faith in it. You're familiar with it. You have no questions about it. Maybe that's your reason, but you want to choose one ETF that you feel very strongly about that you have some kind of proven track record with and you've researched and you know something about it. And for me, I chose VTI because it is 2,000 plus companies inside of one basket because I wanted that to counterbalance any losses I could have possibly taken from the second piece of advice I want to give you in this. Because the second piece of advice is I want you to choose between one to four stocks. And the caveat between that is the one to four stocks has to be at least within the top five of your number one ETF. And I want to show you real quick a very quick way to look at, at what's inside of your ETF because you're like, I didn't know you can look inside of the ETF. I know I didn't either. Ain't no shame in it, but we're going to look at VTI. Let's say VTI is, that's your favorite ETF. You want to go with that one. We're going to go to ETFDB.com. That's what you see right here. I know it says Vetify, but the actual URL is ETFDB.com. What you're going to do you're going to go over to holdings and this shows you and this is going to by default show you the top 15 companies in it. But as you can see, the top four are Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon. That is as simple as the formula can get. And the more stocks that you end up choosing, um, the less you'll be able to hyper focus on the stock. So, so if you have a thousand dollars spread across four stocks, for example, that'll be 250 per stock. So, the reason why it's a mistake for people to invest in like 20 or 30 different stocks, because at that point, you might as well just invest in an ETF that is already made for you. It's made by people way smarter than you. It's built off an algorithm and it's going to give you a return that already has a proven track record. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. But if you stack a very good ETF with very good stocks and you know they're very good stocks because the ETF has faith in them, you are going to see even bigger returns. And so I'm going to show you my Webull account real quick so you can see that I have put this in action. So as you can see, my total account is at 31438 It's going to definitely change by the time I do my net worth video for sure. It's 3.20 a.m. on like a Monday. <laughs> so you got to bear with some of this stuff. But I I'm also on the West Coast going by Pacific Standard Time. So it's technically the, the stock market's open. It's like 620 on the East Coast. But anyway, 
as you can see, I have followed my own advice. I have BTI, Google, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Apple. And I think when I built this, I may have chosen the top four from VOO or something like that, but it's pretty much the same concept. As you can see, I have a very strong portfolio. I am up $17,510. That's 126 more, which means I have more than doubled my principal and I haven't even had this account for that long and I haven't really, I haven't touched it at all this year. And so if I did, it would be even more. But that's just a quick example I wanted to show you. This is a method that I'm actually doing and I'm actually getting results from. And of course I have other investing accounts that also equal out to the whole six figure thing, which I allude to and really show you and break down in my wealth journey series. But I wanted to share that with you because it's nothing that you really have to overthink like that. It's actually pretty darn simple. And we can talk about analysis and how to know you're doing the right thing and, and blah, 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 and you're getting into the right ETF. But for this video, I just want to give you a framework in, in a sense of security in terms of how easy this can actually be and how you can very easily outpace pretty much most people that are investing right now without knowing very much at all. So step six, and this is my favorite step because at this point you're in motion, you're taking the action, and you're making moves. And that move is wash, rent, and repeat. And you automate money going into the account. I will say this, if you're gonna automate your money going into your Roth IRA, make sure you actually go in there and still buy the things that you're that you're buying, like the two ETFs that I told you about. Make sure that you actually hit the invest button and actually buy those two because if you don't that money will just sit in there as if it were a savings account and it won't grow you actually need to send the money to the account and buy it and i can make a whole separate tutorial for that if you're still wanting to know more information on that and um same thing for your Weeble account. They do have it to where you can automate investments there, but you also want to go in there and double check and make sure your payment went through and things like that. If you made it this far in the video, I want you to drop a fire emoji down in the comments and you can put as many flames in there as you want to. But I think this is a tremendously valuable video for the problem that you're wanting to solve because chances are you want to invest. You're in a good place financially. You're not sure where to start and you're kind of hesitant about it but with the right information you would take the action needed to make this happen your money can grow to six figures and beyond very 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 quickly and you might even be at six figures now and they say that once you get the six figures your number really starts to go up a lot quicker and the, the reason for that is because compound interest because 10 percent of a hundred thousand dollars is much greater than 10 percent of thirty thousand dollars and so when you think about it that way it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing and then before you know it you'll be at a million ten percent of a million is way more than 10% of $100,000. And so you're going to be able to do so much with this information. So I want you to drop as many fire signs as you can in the comments and stay tuned for my investment course because it is coming very, very soon. I was doing a trial error where I had people one on one on a coaching call where I like showed them the full course like that. But now I'm going to package it into something that you can rewatch at any given time you want to and you can always refer back to, and it's gonna be extremely valuable. I don't want you to miss that. And in the meantime, I do have the 25, 100% free, 25 highly reputable stocks and ETFs that you can look into investing in and you can do your own research on before you start investing. And that in itself is extremely valuable. And I can't wait for you to sign up for it and start looking at it and actually and, and educate yourself on investing and start taking the action that I know once you take it, your money will go from here to here. Your money will go from here to here. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth and I want to help you grow your money. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.